So it turns out that Google Maps was supposed to have a scenic option, which would be exactly what it sounds like. You know, you, you toggle that option on when time isn't so much of a concern, and you just want to go through the prettier, nicer, and lower crime neighborhoods. But this idea was abandoned because that would cause you to go through the prettier, nicer, and lower crime neighborhoods, and thus avoid other neighborhoods, and that's apparently a bad thing. See, a guy named Casey Climes was the senior, sorry, senior user experience researcher for Google Maps from 2017 to 2021. And he was talking about this scenic route option on Twitter or X, and he was defending it. So it's not that he was bashing Google. In fact, he was defending the methodology and the reason why a scenic route was not and will not be implemented for people. So I think that it's kind of interesting to, to listen to the logic uh, from somebody in that uh, area. And we'll go through it together. But first, I want to let, let him talk. So let's go through what he said. Here's Casey. He says, the Google Maps routing algorithm selects the fastest route between your location and your destination. That means every segment of the street network has an equal chance at being traveled, given the commonality of location, destination deltas, and street segment connectivity. The current, <clears throat> the current algorithm is basically objective. Any shift toward nice or scenic routes is going to take some new subset of variables into account. Beautiful architecture, street trees, etc. This naturally introduces bias to the system, again at global scale. On its own, this bias isn't necessarily a bad thing, but let's examine the shape of this bias. Ask yourself, between these two streets, which one is this new scenic route algorithm going to choose? I mean, when I look at this, I go, probably the same one that I choose, I'm, I'm gonna guess, the one that looks like it would have fewer crimes. I'm not really sure like what he's trying to say when he looks at this, but for me, it's pretty clear which is the most scenic route and which one also I would like to travel. So yes, like I'm, I'm biased against bad neighborhoods, you know, definitely. But let's continue. He says, you see where this is going? Because of its global scale, even a small shift in maps routing from a seemingly innocuous and frankly very useful feature could create a reinforcing feedback loop with spatial inequality. Inadvertently diverting foot traffic from low-income streets to high-income streets takes revenue and potentially tax dollars from already struggling communities and funnels it instead to richer communities. Always remember, we live and build tools in complex systems. For context, in my experience, this idea was usually discussed with regard to walking navigation specifically. Additional context, I'm sharing my opinion and my opinion alone, which doesn't reflect the perspective of the company. I was not the person who would have decided if this, if this feature got built or not. No, but he clearly has um, the same sort of um, mental gymnastics. Okay, um, that point about how it's prim prim primarily for walking kind of makes the point a little bit clearer to me because it's like, all right, well, when you're walking is when your safety is paramount because you can't get out of a situation very quickly. So yeah, I don't want Google to give me the route through the neighborhood that I wouldn't want to walk through if I knew what it looked like ahead of time. And Google does know what it looks like ahead of time. Therefore, they have the data to help me to avoid it. Like I, I would be in favor also of like a, a crime map based Google Maps, right? Where I could actually just avoid the areas of high crime, which would probably look the same as you know, going toward the scenic route option. And that's the thing. What we're looking at is the prioritization of um, favoring these, as they call it, low income neighborhoods, or just the ghetto, um, over like actual individual safety or even what the users want, right? Because they can turn it on or off in this hypothetical scenario. But it's like, no, we can't give them that option because if they do have that option, then they will avoid the crappy neighborhood that they would like to avoid. And we can't have that happen because, frankly, racism. Because, let, I mean, let, let's be honest, you know, it's like we're, we're talking around the issue and we're talking about low income neighborhoods and so on. But, you know, uh, people have, I mean, when it really comes down to it, it's like, okay, if if the pretty neighborhoods happen to be white, then do we do we have to avoid them because they're white? Because implicitly, that's what he's saying. And it's like, 
there's so much that's sort of wrapped up in like modern uh, DEI style methodology, but it's ultimately you end up getting people hurt. And in some sense, it's not even, it's not directly a racial issue in the sense that, okay, you've got a young black woman. Do you want her to walk through the, the crappy neighborhood too? Like, like, of course not. Like <laughs> in, in both scenarios, it's like, okay, give us the option to choose the the prettier route or the safer route, I should say, but also the prettier route. Like I think that it's actually there are times when, in this case, it'd be more like driving rather than walking. You would just want you know to to not see concrete constantly, and maybe that wouldn't be advantageous to a, a very urban community. But okay, so uh, I'm not sure that that we have a moral obligation to place ourselves in a situation that is either more dangerous or just like less spiritually healthy because it's not I don't think it's spirit I don't think anybody argues that living in a super urban environment or driving through it is good for your spiritual or emotional health right so I don't think that we have a moral um impetus to place these things at risk so that so that we so that we aid them in some sense and then there's the whole argument well they will lose they will lose money if people don't go through them okay people don't want to stay in those neighborhoods and get things right they they don't um because you're placing them in that neighborhood that doesn't mean that they, they they're like oh let me just hang out in the ghetto for as long as possible and you know just go and, and get some some candy from this uh 7-eleven or this rite aid or whatever like like no it's the sort of neighborhood that you try and get out of as soon as possible if they want more traffic in that neighborhood then they would have to actually you know fix the neighborhood but simply having more people coming into it and thus being placed at risk is is not a net good and again especially if you're talking about people who are on foot um I would say that, that the opposite is true, which is to say that there's an immorality in actively, if, you're, if you have a choice, right, in, in forcing people into an unsafe situation. Like on, on behalf of Google, there's an immorality in the decision that says, yes, we could help people to be safer. No, we're not going to do it because instead um, we favor what we're going to call equity. I think that that, that itself is a, is a pretty perverse um, moral structure, right? Um, it's because what you, I mean, what we're saying right now is you can't choose the safer communities because that would keep low-income streets poorer. It's like um, I, it's wrong in theory and it's wrong in execution. It's a, you know because nobody stays in that neighborhood to to put money into it, <laughs> and nobody wants to go to that neighborhood when people when the crime rate goes up and random people get killed in that neighborhood. Also, does not help um, the street to be the street to become in some way prettier that's not the way to um to assist a community right it's just ultimately it's google trying not to be perceived as in some way you know uh racist or anti-poor or something like that and in so doing placing all kinds of people from all kinds of economic backgrounds if you really work you know concerned only about economic backgrounds you're placing them all in increased danger right because somebody from a poor economic background probably also does not want to get mugged. I mean, I'm just guessing here, um, but I'm pretty sure that no matter where you stand on the income ladder, nobody wants to have the increased risk of getting mugged. And therefore, maybe we should give them the option to go around and into into a, into a better neighborhood. It's just, just, you know, crazy talk, I know. We live in a time where such such basic points are like, seen as just inflammatory for no reason because we can't even speak the truth because everyone's offended so easily and so instead like if you were giving someone directions um and there were two routes to get there and one was just like really shady and you're sending them through the hood and then one wasn't you can imagine like on an, an interpersonal level what are the chances you're going to send the person through the really awful neighborhood like who would do that and why and can you imagine how, how awful you would feel if you did? Because, I mean, like, are you just hoping that something happens to them? You see what I mean? Like, in some sense, I think it's actually clearer when you think about it on a one-on-one -on -one basis, like what that would actually look like in practice. It looks atrocious because it is. Because it is. And that is the mindset 
of your friend Google. Hey, you're still here! Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with your friends. I've also got links in the description as to how you can help support my work. Thank you so much!